we are a gaslit nation. I mean, absolutely persuaded that if a lot of the stuff that's happened in the last few years had been told to us 20 or 30 years ago as something that was on the horizon, we'd have, we'd have taken to the streets to oppose it. And yes, yet because it's happened incrementally, they've got away with murder. 13 years of getting everything their own way. 13 years of Tory prime minister. 13 years of watching an already right-wing Tory party lurch further to the right. 13 years of seeing policy decisions essentially drafted by secretly funded lobby groups masquerading as think tanks up and down Tufton Street and its environs. Uh, 13 years of everything they dreamt of, everything they asked for, everything they wanted. And then, of course, Brexit. Six, seven years of that. And look where we are. So all of these people populating almost all of your newspapers, popping up on your programs from their weird little acronym organisation, still being treated with respect by presenters who should know better, still being afforded newsprint in papers. People like Dominic Raab still being treated as um, uh, decent contributors to public discourse. People like Jacob, all of them. They've had exactly what they wanted for 13 years. And look where it's brought us. Now do you see what I mean? about gaslighting. And, and they're still complaining. They're still whining. They're still taking responsibility for nothing. But what unites them is hard to pin down sometimes. This sort of bogus libertarianism, which the lockdown showed us isn't libertarianism at all. It's, it's, it's all about um, being perfectly comfortable with other people being told what to do, but I'm absolutely adamant that no one's allowed to tell me how I should behave. Free markets, markets should decide everything. That's a, a camouflage for a hatred of the fact that very rich people should pay a hell of a lot more money gross into a country than everybody else does. That extremely high tax for extremely wealthy people is the only way that you can keep, or, of course, much smaller gaps between the best paid and the, and the lowest paid. It's got to be one or the other. At the moment, we've got the worst of both possible worlds. We've got enormous gaps between the super rich and ordinary workers. And we've got taxation, which Liz Trust tried to make even more favorable to the very wealthy, that favors the very wealthy. So let the markets decide everything. If you struggle to understand how successive governments could have watched and I'm going to list them again. Nurses, ambulance staff, firefighters, teachers, head teachers, postal workers, bus workers, rail workers, border force staff, university staff, civil servants and highway workers. Could have left them hanging. Could have left them declining in terms of income, meeting cost of living. If you're struggling to understand it, think about that phrase, let the markets decide everything. How can the markets decide the value of someone whose work can't be measured in money. How can the markets decide the value of someone whose work can't be measured in cash? A nurse, an ambulance driver, a paramedic, a firefighter, a teacher, a head teacher, even a postal worker, certainly a bus worker, a rail worker. How can, if you're going to let the markets decide everything, which is what these vampires claim they want, or they're often too thick to understand what they're talking about. They're just rehearsing lines that have been fed to them from one of those ghoulish so-called think tanks. How can you put a value? How can the market decide the value of something that you can't quantify in cash terms? And that's what's happened. All of the people doing jobs that can't be quantified in cash terms, that can't be judged according to how much profit they make, all of those people are now looking at taking industrial action. It's weird, isn't it?